untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I was taking a look at a Monorad Discard Graveyard deck titled Night School as it marries the day and night cycle from Innistrad with the learn mechanic from Strixhaven. And we've got eight different Phoenix cards in our deck with Sunstreak Phoenix, a four mana 4-2 flyer, saying if it's neither day or night it becomes day as the Phoenix enters a battlefield. And when day becomes night or night becomes day, we can pay one and a red to return the Phoenix from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So powerful recursive threat. And then we also have Retriever Phoenix from Strixhaven, a 2-2 with Flying and Haste. And when a Phoenix enters a battlefield, if we cast it, we get to learn, meaning we can discard a card from our hand to draw a card, or we can grab one of our seven sideboard lessons in Best of One, including two copies of Environmental Sciences to find a basic land and gain two, start from scratch to destroy an artifact or deal one damage to any target, expanded anatomy, can put two plus one plus one counters on a creature and give it vigilance until end of turn, we've got introduction to prophecy for card draw, Illuminate History can also help discard cards from our hand and draw a few extra cards in the process. And then Mask on Exhibition, a nice finisher if we get to 7 mana. So those are the lessons we can learn for. But more often than not, if we have our Phoenix in the graveyard and we learn, we're going to want to get that 2-2 haste back from the graveyard. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got kind of half of our deck dedicated to the learn mechanic and the other half to the day and night cycle with a little bit of overlapping synergy with cards that let us discard to put some of our finishes in the graveyard in the first place. So at one mana we've got Voldaren Epicure, a 1-1 vampire, that when it enters the battlefield deals 1 damage to each opponent, and we also get to create a blood token, which we can pay 1 mana tap, discard a card and sacrifice to draw a card, so the blood token helps us put Phoenix in the graveyard, and then we can potentially reanimate it as early as turn 2 in the case of Retriever Phoenix, by going turn 1 Voldaren Epicure, turn 2 we can sacrifice our blood token to discard our Retriever Phoenix, and then 1 mana left over to cast Academic Dispute, an instant that says target creature blocks this turn if able, and you may have it gain reach until end of turn, and we get to learn as well. So that can set up a turn to Retriever Phoenix, just the ability to force the opponent to block can definitely come in handy, help us trade off some of our recursive threats for opposing creatures, and then get them back later. So definitely an undervalued card that has a lot of utility, besides just being a one mana way to learn and grab one of our sideboard lessons. Then we also have the full place at a Falconrath Pitfighter, a 2-1 to apply some early pressure. Can also pay one on a red to discard a card and sacrifice a vampire to draw two cards. Can only activate it if the opponent lost life this turn. So this pairs very nicely with our Voldaren Epicure, as we can potentially play the Epicure on turn 3 with the Pitfighter in play. And then with the leftover mana we can sacrifice the Epicure since we've dealt one damage to the opponent. And then potentially draw more cards and discard some of our finishes. Then we also have the full place at a Frostbite alongside 20 snow covered lands to potentially deal 3 damage at instant speed to a creature or a planeswalker. Then at 2 mana we also have a new addition with Cemetery Gatekeeper, a 2-1 Mythic Rare Vampire with First Strike, and when the Gatekeeper enters a battlefield we can exile a card from a graveyard, can be any graveyard including our own, and whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, the Gatekeeper deals 2 damage to that player. So it is symmetrical, but since we're the aggressive deck most of the time we don't really mind dealing 2 damage to each player. And some neat things we can do with a Gatekeeper, of course, includes discarding our lands, so we can then exile them with a Gatekeeper, and then whenever an opponent or we play a land, it will deal 2 damage. And then, of course, we can also target some spell-based decks by exiling an instant or sorcery, so they have to take 2 damage every time. And then we can also sometimes just play it as a 2-drop, and it will be fine there too. Also a Vampire to synergize with our Pit Fighter. Then we also have the full playset of Obsessive Astronomer as a 2-2 Human Wizard that will also introduce the day and night cycle to synergize with our Sunstreak Phoenix. Because of course if we discard our Sunstreak Phoenix but we haven't introduced the day and night cycle yet, then we won't be able to eventually get it back. So we do need some other cards in the deck with the day bound mechanic. And then the Astronomer says whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, discard up to two cards and then draw that many cards. It's another perfect way to discard our Phoenix. And then at 3 mana we also have a Reckless Stormseeker as another daybound card. A 2-3 saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 2 and gains haste until end of turn. And then on the nightbound side it will be a 3-4 giving a creature plus 2 plus 0 trample and haste until end of turn. So incredibly powerful. 
Then we've got Igneous Inspiration as another card to help us learn, dealing 3 damage to any target as well. And then at 4 mana we've got our Phoenix cards, and the mana base includes 3 copies of Faceless Haven as a powerful creature land can turn into a 4-3 with Vigilance and all creature types, so technically also a Vampire. And this also gives us a nice mana sink to potentially let it transform to nighttime if we haven't cast any other spells that turn to help us get back our Sunstreak Phoenix and transform our Stormseeker or trigger the Astronomer. And then 17 basic snow-covered mountains, 20 lands total might seem a bit low, but of course we're not often going to hard cast or 4 drops, plus with all the discard and draw that's happening, we're usually going to draw into the lands when we need them. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, we've got a keeper. This is turn to bring back a retriever phoenix, since we can go Ampicure into Academic Dispute. So, wouldn't mind drawing another Retriever Phoenix. Up against Blue Red, so probably an Epiphany deck. Alright, so we don't need to worry about any instant speed interaction here. So, discard Phoenix. And Inspiration will be another way to get it back, so... No lack of ways to recur Retriever Phoenix. Alright, opponent's uh, Just Guy deck. Which foretells a card. Alright, Pit Fighter's not bad, so now I'm liking attack with a team and then sacrifice Epicure to Pit Fighter. So that if our opponent does have a sweeper incoming, we uh, at least get some value here. And then probably discard another Epicure. Alright, another Phoenix we can set up here. Opponent passes, and yeah, probably go for Epicure, discard Phoenix. Now our opponent does have 4 mana, so if they have interaction they can kind of um, fizzle my academic dispute, so I won't be able to learn and get back the Phoenix. So the alternative would be to maybe wait until next turn and then learn with Igneous Inspiration. So step 1, I can still play the Epicure, see if they have a response. And then if I want to, I could use the Pit Fighter again with the Apicure as well. And then discard Retriever Phoenix that way. Opponent's got Spike Field Hazard plus, uh oh, is this uh, Sweeper incoming? Yeah, Cinderclasm. So I can use the Pit Fighter, but the Phoenix will get exiled here because of the Spike Field Hazard. So pretty unfortunate sequence for us. But I can follow up with another Pit Fighter at least. And then Gatekeeper can exile maybe an instant here or Sorcery. Sunstreak Phoenix, I would also rather discard than pay for mana, especially if they have a Divide by Zero in hand. So this turn I could double spell Gatekeeper and Astronomer, perhaps. So, step one, probably attack still. Uh, opponent's got to divide by zero. Does that change my play? 
think I still prefer double spelling as opposed to playing a Sunstreak Phoenix. And then probably exile the Sorcery here, since that punishes Environmental Sciences plus maybe an Elrond's Epiphany. And then this will introduce the Day and Night Cycle, so I can maybe discard the Sunstreak Phoenix and later get it back. So our opponent's got 6 mana, they could already cast an Elrond's Epiphany. Gonna be a Doomscar instead. At least we deal 2 damage, and the Day and Night Cycle has started. Opponent keeps up 3 mana, so doesn't cast Sciences. So maybe they're more of a Jeskai Control deck than really an Epiphany deck. So can play another Gatekeeper, play Pit Fighter, plus Dispute maybe to get back my Retriever Phoenix. Let's start with Gatekeeper. Could also exile an Instance. Alright, that resolves. And then... Yeah, still tempted to exile a sorcery here. Upside of exiling an instance, like a cheap one, consider or hazard, is that they also won't be able to easily get it back with a future Leer. So that's a reason to maybe get rid of Spikefield Hazard. Even though we know for a fact they have a sorcery in hand. And then... Play Pit Fighter, see if there's a response. There is not. Yeah, I mean, going for a dispute here seems a little sketchy, so I'm just gonna pass it back. And then I can use the Blood Token to discard Sunstreak Phoenix, potentially. Alright, iteration makes me regret not exiling Doomscar. And unexpected windfall. Which they cannot cast since they don't have double red. So, that iteration going a little bit to waste. Divide by zero bounces Gatekeeper, opponent takes two. And gets a start from scratch. Stormseeker's not bad. So opponent still has two mana up, but less likely to have interaction for a three toughness creature. So I could play Stormseeker. There doesn't seem to be a pause, and then dispute Stormseeker. And then... We can get back Retriever Phoenix and hit for a healthy amount. Opponents at one. And we've got six points of burn in hand. Right, opponent's gonna windfall. Six mana left, not enough for an Elrond's Epiphany. So it's gonna be a Fading Hope. And a start from scratch, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, so managed to beat Just Guy Control. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Could go turn one Epicure, turn two, sack the Blood Token, play second Epicure. To maybe hit my land drops, discard Sunstreak Phoenix, and then we can uh, maybe have something to exile with the Gatekeeper to set that up as well. Opponent with a Jwari Ruins turn one, so probably a blue-red deck of some variety. Having Faceless Havens, quite nice. Not playing the full playset because we do often need double red in early games, so I wouldn't want to draw a double Haven early on. Plenty of copies of Sunstreak Phoenix. So, we'll hit for one. And then... Hopefully we can find another day night cycle card or just keep hitting our land drops until we get to four to introduce a day and night cycle. 
don't want to discard Sunstreak Phoenix with our Cemetery Gatekeeper, but Expressive Iteration would be fine. Alright, aligned is good. So I think the plan here is attack, play Gatekeeper, and potentially discard a second Phoenix. So now sorceries are taxed. And then somewhere in the future we might be able to pass a turn to let it switch to nighttime and get back double Sunstreak Phoenix for four mana. So that's going to be a nice sequence. All right, iteration at the cost of two life. And Phoenix discarded. Now we do have to watch out for another Jory Disruption, which could potentially counter our Phoenix. Right, opponent had to discard to hand size and gets rid of a Jory Disruption. Not sure if that means they have another one. Most decks typically only play three Jory Disruptions. So chances of them having the third in hand aren't incredibly high. So I guess we can start by attacking and seeing what happens. And it's going to be a Fading Hope. All right, so now we can resolve our Sunstreak Phoenix. Fading Hope also a good answer to the non-hasty 4-drop. So... This seems like a good outcome. If we find an extra land, we could also animate Faceless Haven, and then still have two mana left over to potentially get back a Phoenix from the graveyard, thanks to Vigilance. So, kind of seeing all the neat little synergies. This is definitely an unusual deck with a lot of unusual play patterns that don't come up in any other strategy, which also makes it fun to play. I've had some cool sequences with Academic Dispute, getting a uh, copy of Expanded Anatomy out of the sideboard to kind of grow my creature and force the opponent's creature to block. And our opponent is getting to that dangerous part of the game where they could start chaining together extra turns. Especially if they can make more mana here with a Goldspan Dragon. I'm gonna be forced to trade, even though... Keeping the Phoenix in play would also be nice. And then for one mana, could have another Fading Hope, but that didn't seem to be the case, so I could animate Faceless Haven, let it switch to Night, get back Phoenix. Or I could play a couple copies of Cemetery Gatekeeper. I think I prefer the Haven line of play, assuming there's no Fading Hope. and falls to five and we'll get one back and then not too difficult to switch it back to daytime inspiration is three more damage so we're close to killing them but this is where the extra turns usually start happening so exiling another sorcery with Gatekeeper could be important. Alright, opponent passes with a whole bunch of mana up. So could see Cinderclasm deal 2 to everything. And do I want to play a Gatekeeper on instant first? That's probably fine. And then Inspiration could technically burn them out. Or I could attack first, force him to cast it, and then Gatekeeper on the sorcery. This may be better. Right. There's a Cinderclasm kicked. And 
then if we name sorcery, we don't have to worry about our opponent taking too many extra turns with Alrun's Epiphany. Could play one on instant, one on sorcery, I suppose. So maybe the first one on instant. Alright, opponent's going to windfall in response. I do have the option of casting Dispute here. So I can switch it back to Daytime, get back Phoenix, but I think we're going with a different approach. So Gatekeeper resolves. Nope, it's going to get abraded. Fair enough. In that case, I want to exile something cheap in case they're playing a Leer. So I guess Fading Hope makes sense. And then play another Gatekeeper. And this time on Sorcery. So I won't be able to get back Sunstreak Phoenix now, but that's okay. If we can get them to three, we can maybe burn them out. Field of Ruin, an answer to Faceless Haven. All right, another Cinder Clasm, unfortunately. So your opponent might be able to lift to tell the tale as another expressive iteration goes digging. So they don't have a ton of cards to work with at five life, but it doesn't take much for them to chain together those extra turns and kind of take over. Now I do have the option of just passing to get back multiple copies of Sunstreak Phoenix. Which might be the play. Pit Fighter. So... Yeah, I think I'm going with the Sunstreak plan, which means I won't be able to play Pit Fighter. Opponents already cast double Cinder Clasm, so hopefully not too many more sweepers to worry about. So not enough mana for double Alrun's Epiphany, but a single Alrun's Epiphany will work. Gonna hang on to Frostbite for now until we see more. Alright, Deluge to find some action. So this seems doable. Potent passes with four mana. And divides one Phoenix. Okay. So if we draw lands, we can probably win here. So I don't think I get back a Phoenix, since if I draw land, I can Inspiration plus get a uh, start from scratch. We did not draw land. So now what? Now things get a little bit more tricky. I can still Academic Dispute, get start from scratch on the birds, and then attack with Sunstreak Phoenix, and then keep the Inspiration for next turn to burn them out. I think that's the plan. And then I want to target my own Phoenix, because they probably don't have one mana to deal two damage, but they could have another Spike Field Hazard, so I don't want them killing their own bird. Although I guess if they do, they're just that to Inspiration, so that's fine actually. So get start from scratch. Kill the bird, put them to one. And then hopefully we can burn them out. Another epiphany. But they're not really gaining a ton of momentum. No creature land to worry about. And not a double extra turn. So unlikely to completely kill us here. And that's why I wanted to put my opponent to one so we could actually burn them out since they're gonna start making lots of chum blockers. 
And yeah, I think we're gonna get the job done here. So nice lengthy game against Is it Epiphany? Opponents got the fading hope, but that's not gonna do it here. And they explode, sweet, so get to see the power of Sunstreak Phoenix in this one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Could use an extra land, but we've got some good early plays, especially when facing other small creature decks. And then a curve of Stormseeker into Sunstreak Phoenix is a particularly powerful one. So just a Gatekeeper as a 2-1 first strike, as it seems like we're up against another blue-red deck. Smoldering Egg. Alright, I guess we'll attack into it, and then we can finish it off if they block. And I'll also play Astronomer here. So if the opponent passes, it goes to Knight, Stormseeker will be very big. And we can also discard our Sunstreak Phoenix. So our opponent's gonna divide main phase. So time for a hasty Stormseeker now. And then a land next turn would be great if our opponent taps out for a start from scratch on Gatekeeper. It's gonna be Iteration instead. Yeah, Hasty Sunstreak Phoenix would be quite powerful. It's awkward with a Stormseeker when you return it from the graveyard, because then it comes back tapped, but it's fine if you just cast it for 4 mana. Opponent foretells, and there's a land, perfect. Opponent all the way to 6, so double inspiration could burn them out. Right. Opponent does have the sweeper. And then might as well attack with Faceless Haven here. And play Astronomer. And then one of these two needs to resolve to win the game. Opponent's gonna take their extra turn. But it's only one extra turn. And there's Leer. That's not gonna do it. Alright, sweet. And there we have it. So this one a little bit faster than our previous matchup. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got Pit Fighter into maybe turn to Epicure. To discard Sunstreak Phoenix, Stormseeker to enable it. Although we could also potentially curve Stormseeker into Phoenix on turn 4. Depending on the situation, opponent's mono green but no early plays. So, I'm tempted to hang on to Stormseeker and Sunstreak Phoenix, and then maybe just discard Retriever Phoenix with Epicure, which also helps me hit my land drops. That seems fine. So, expecting a powerful 3-drop if they kept that hand. Still nothing. Interesting. So maybe our opponent's more of a ramp deck than your typical green stompy deck. Dispute can get back Retriever Phoenix. But there's land number four, so definitely liking Stormseeker now. Can give itself hastes. Any flash creature I should be worried about? Can't really think of much. Mm, 
All right, so has to be an Asikas Charioteer at least. Yeah. So expecting a Renan 7 next turn. If they kept such a slow hand. But we might be fine with that. I can play Sunstreak Phoenix, give it haste, hit them for 5, down to 6. I guess the alternative is Academic Dispute. Instead of getting back Sunstreak Phoenix, learn for a way to destroy a Seekas Chariot, so they won't be able to copy the Tree Folk token. Because if I go for a hasty Sunstreak Phoenix here, opponent's still at 6. And we're kind of far from burning them out. So I might have to destroy the Chariot instead. Although then my turn isn't all that exciting. I guess Spitfighter can trade for a Cat. And Apicure can get one extra power. So I guess it's not that bad. Alright, fair enough. Force this to block. Pretty happy if they crew in response, but they're not going to. Can start from scratch. Could only attack with Apicure, or could trade for both. If I attack with everyone, they just double block Stormseeker instead. That doesn't seem very good. Yeah, I guess we'll trade for the cat tokens, sure. Alright, so that chariot did a very good job of stabilizing, but hopefully we'll have an easier time dealing with Run and Seven now. Okay, so I can make a hasty phoenix and then just send a phoenix at Ren. And then they're still gonna have a pretty big token to block with going forward. What if I go face at this point? Opponent takes it, they're at 6, this is gonna keep growing. And we'll somehow have to go wide. Think I gotta kill the planeswalker here. And then I'm fine with a trade. Don't want to sacrifice Stormseeker. And then we could let it switch to nighttime to potentially transform Stormseeker as well. So yeah, the chariot did a very good job of stabilizing, all things considered. Since we were forced to take an alternate approach. They probably have some fight spells in hand that they weren't able to use. Ooh, Vorinclex instead. But forced to stay back. So now I can play another Stormseeker. So they can both pump Phoenix. Opponent takes it. And then Gatekeeper. Let's see, I suspect my opponent has an instant in hand. Like a snakeskin veil potentially. So I think I go for instant here. Could also see a Blizzard Brawl. Oh, it's going to be Inscription. So that also triggers the Gatekeeper. But our opponent gains 10 life. So not a very comfortable situation. And then now a Blizzard Brawl as well. Ouch. Guess we'll take 11. Another Stormseeker is the draw. Might be better off passing, letting it turn to night, get back my Phoenix, and then next turn have two transformed Stormseekers to play with. But yeah, I guess Vorinclax tramples. So I'm gonna have to jump with the Stormseeker. 
So if our opponent doesn't have any additional blockers and we top deck Ignis Inspiration, we can get back Retriever Phoenix, and then I think we have just enough. So a lot needs to go right here for that to happen. But I think that's still my best chance. Pack leader to play. Both attack. So I'm gonna be forced to double chump here. Now that I have a pack leader on defense, I don't even think Ignis Inspiration is gonna be good enough. So a little bit short here. That inscription getting them 10 life was certainly a big swing in life totals. So that's a shame here, but uh, goes to show how powerful Isika's chariot is at stabilizing, despite our opponent not playing anything before turn 4. They did have some good late game here to stabilize. And there's a snakeskin veil as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable if unexciting hand. I can perhaps discard Retriever Phoenix to the first learn and then get it back on the second. Would much rather face a creature deck with two removal spells in hand than anything else. So do I want to hang on to the Gatekeeper? If our opponent plays like the 3-3 pack leader next turn, I won't quite be able to frostbite it yet. And I might be able to dispute, force it to block, and then first strike plus a frostbite can take it out. And there's a pack leader. Third Snow Lands means we can Frostbite it for one mana, could also Inspiration. So we've got a couple options. I kind of like Inspiration, Discard Retriever Phoenix. And then next turn I can maybe do that same trick we discussed of Academic Dispute plus a Burn Spell. All right, looks like they're gonna have a fight spell instead here, or maybe a snakeskin veil. If they have snakeskin veil, how do I want to sequence? So in my graveyard, there's no instance. I could dispute my own gatekeeper to get back Phoenix and then waste the double frostbites. That's an option, although it feels kind of wasteful to make them spend their one mana when I could potentially line up the Frostbite a little bit better. I think I want to keep Frostbite to potentially punish fight spells in the future. Yeah, I think I might just have to play Gatekeeper, Exile a Creature and pass. I think I can get better value out of Academic Dispute than just using it on my own Gatekeeper here to get back Phoenix. And then double Gatekeeper with First Strike and hold off the pack leader. And we can play a slightly more controlling game until we find a good window for Dispute to get back Retriever Phoenix. Or perhaps learn for Expanded Anatomy, which pairs well with the first strike on Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper resolves. Play a land. And then we'll pass. Sculptor of Winter. Triggers Gatekeeper.
opponent has a Blizzard Brawl with three Snow Permanents in play now, but we get to punish it with Frostbite. And then next turn we could Academic Dispute for Sculpture to block, so we would have been in a pretty good position. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a Phoenix to discard. So it's not all that exciting. We do have Upic here to hit my land drops and eventually play a Stormseeker. I guess it's still keepable, but really hoping to find a Phoenix to discard here. Since we have both a day and night enabler as well as a way to learn. So I guess for now just second Epicure and then we can loot end of turn. I might just get rid of the academic dispute. Opponents a blue control deck. So they could have a Jory Disruption number two to counter Stormseeker. Or Fading Hope. Seems more like Fading Hope. Which is fine. Still introduces the day and night cycle. And Faisal Saven, not a bad draw. So they're gonna bounce before we get the trigger, which is smart. But now our opponent's gonna be forced to main phase some of their spells if they don't want it to transform to nighttime. Opponent is blue red. So I'm expecting like a divide by zero here. Which could be a reason to attack with Faceless Haven, but I think we still kind of force the issue here with the Stormseeker. Since we have a second one. Yep. And then I can still loot with my blood token, although there's nothing I actively want to discard. We'll see if they can double spell, switch it back to daytime. Science is up to 15, and opponent passes. Yeah, I mean, I think I hang on to double inspiration to burn them out once they make a few birds. Now I can discard Sunstreak Phoenix. Smash for seven. Opponent stuck on four lands as well. There's an argument for keeping the Phoenix to just cast, but I've got a feeling we're going to be able to reanimate it. So, Stormseeker number two. Which, they might have a divide by zero to bounce one of them, but then the other still hits them. And then they should be within burn range. And our opponent explodes. There we go. So managed to beat the Blue Red Epiphany deck three times. All the games played out slightly differently. But overall the early pressure backed up by recursive threats if they do manage to wipe the board. And then Faceless Haven also very important. Shows that it's a very winnable matchup. Now we somehow dodged the Mono White matchup today. That one can be tricky. Of course, we do have some burn spells between Frostbite and our Igneous Inspiration, which are very important. And a first strike creature is also a good blocker early on. So I think it's a winnable matchup. But uh, overall, I still prefer playing against slightly more controlling builds where we really get to see the power of our recursive threats as opposed to Mono White, where sometimes you get run over before the Phoenix can really shine. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.